Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Mission Moonshot. Here, as you can see in the simulation, we have a new rocket right here. Um, yeah, this is the CSJ Heavy, as you can tell with the extra solid rocket boosters. But yeah, this version, I've been testing it and this has the capability to go to the moon. It has the precision to hit the moon and all that. So this is this is gonna be our, our ticket here. But yeah, we can't build this thing right now for a multitude of reasons. Number one, we need a bigger launch pad. The launch pad we have right now is way too small. Um, so that's gonna cost money. We also need to unlock all the parts, which is gonna cost money. And we also have to wait for the parts on the tech tree because this uses some, some new parts. More specifically, the upper stage engines here. Um, our, our new parts we haven't unlocked yet. So that's all fine and good. I'm gonna go ahead and run one launch test to make sure this thing does indeed work. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get on with launching some more regular CSJ launch vehicles. Because yeah, we need to, like I said, we need to make um, some money so that we can one, upgrade the launch pad, and to actually get this thing constructed. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and pick up some contracts. We can go ahead and pick up one extra contract. The weather satellite? Achieve an orbit with a perigee above 300 kilometers and an eccentricity below... Okay, eccentricity below. That's that, that we can do that. It's basically just a circular orbit is basically what they want with that. So yeah, I think we'll go ahead and start with weather. Alrighty, let's go ahead and build the rocket and the plane. Because yeah, we can build both at the same time now that we have our upgraded VAB. Alrighty, well there we go. I went ahead and finished up the weather satellite rocket. As you can see, this is our weather sat right here. I went ahead and went for like a hexagon pattern. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty nice. And then I also went ahead and got the magnetometer boom. Went ahead and unlocked that so that we could have it um, on the satellite. Everything else is pretty much just the same as the normal rocket. So yeah, now we should be having both the X-15 and the CSJ getting built at the same time. Not quite sure what's going on with the build time over here. Hopefully that gets figured out. But yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty nice. Oh, I think I know what's happening. Rate 1 and Rate 2 VAB. We have to put points in our Rate 2 VAB in order for it to actually start building two things at once. Right, right. I didn't even, I didn't even really think about that. Because yeah, we did upgrade, but we didn't spec any build points into here. So the build time is atrocious basically but that's fine our build time is way faster than it used to be so that'll be all good Beautiful. oh no yeah by the way i did install the um the black wreck volumetric clouds mod so, so if you're wondering why the clouds look all fancy that's why Alrighty, rocket are you okay i think he's fine he's just a little shaky that's all Alrighty, all this looks good yep let's go ahead and get off this launch pad before it destroys the rocket here three two one ignition and lift off. See you later, you janky, janky launch pad. And hello, space. And there we go. Nice, stable orbit. So what we can go ahead and do is wait for the contract to go ahead and complete itself. And yeah, what I want to do is go ahead and make sure that this satellite is facing the sun. So yeah, we'll go ahead and pitch. And we seem pretty stable in this orientation, so I see no need to um, spin stabilize the satellite. Goodbye, little one. There we go. It's gonna drift around a bit, but that's fine. When I, when I actually did my simulation, I actually did spin stabilize this thing, and it had a bit of the the Zanny Bekov effect, where it would like spin around and then flip over. It's probably gonna do that right now. Yeah, there it goes. It's doing the Zanny Bekov effect. 
Where it's spinning and oh, it's going around like the T-handle on the ISS. But there we go. There's our little, little, little weather sat. And that should also be the contract completed. If I didn't mess it up somehow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just still counting. So that's good. Nice, easy contract completed with our nice little satellite. And yeah, this should hopefully gather a nice 6.6 .6 science for us over the course of the next 30 days. Very nice, happy little satellite. First weather satellite. Mm-hmm, yes, weather. This is this thing is studying the weather. Look at the fancy clouds. Look at all the fancy clouds that I paid $5 for. Mm-hmm, very fancy. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next <laughs> thing, which is the um, communication satellite. Alrighty, next thing. Oh, early weather satellite. Uh, the satellite will be destroyed. I'm completing the contract. This simulates transfer of the payload to the customer. Ah. Okay, launch a weather satellite in top of orbit. So basically now, now that we've done the first weather satellite, now we're starting to get people who want weather satellites. That's a pretty good contract, but yeah, I think we'll go ahead and move on to first uh, navigational. Yeah, it's a 45 degree orbit. That's all there, there really is to it, which, yeah, should be possible with... 100 units of NAVSAT payload. That might be... hmm. Yeah, we'll see. This one might be a little bit trickier, but I believe we can still do it. Com satellite offers a bit more, but I feel like this would just be a lot trickier. I don't know. This this is going to require some, like, navigation, because we got to get into a pretty precise eccentric orbit. Yeah, we'll go ahead and accept navigational satellite. That seems fine by me. Yeah, it should be possible. The 45 degree orbit is a little on the iffy side, but um, I think if we design a slightly different satellite, maybe with its own dedicated propulsion system, because yeah, we don't need a, a perfectly eccentric orbit for this one. Like, no, there's no issue about eccentricity. Um, so yeah, we could put like a little kick stage, little solid kick stage on there, and that'll be good. Alrighty, and that's another satellite design. This is our NAVSAT. Went for the uh, fillet cylinder design, surrounded it with solar panels. Put some sciencey stuff on top, and went all out with the uh, solid rocket boosters here. So that all seems pretty, pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get that built. I went ahead and tooled everything except for the avionics. I don't, I don't think I should tool that because I don't know if we're ever gonna build this very specific avionic again. Oh, I just realized that's not even science core. What am I doing? <laughs> Alright, there we go. Length 1.2 by a diameter of 1. Alrighty, perfect. And yeah, that brings it down to 76 build time. Because yeah, when I think it comes to the science core, tooling them is way cheaper. And yeah, we probably don't even need the solid kick stages now that I'm looking at this. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. Alrighty, come on. Hopefully it can, it can, it's can still going up. So hopefully it can, it can keep climbing all the way up to 85. Um, we had a bit of an issue there. The autopilot map thing wasn't working and the RCS wasn't working because this crossfeed wasn't enabled. But, um, but yeah, hopefully we should be able to try it again very, very quickly here. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna quite make it all the way up. Cause yeah, the thing just wasn't pitching up and I had no idea what was going on. The RCS was going and I finally decided to just go ahead and use Smart ASS over here to, to get it to pitch up. And that finally worked, but it was too little too late. And I mean, we're still climbing, but I doubt we're gonna continue to climb that much. So that's a bummer. Yeah, that's a big, big bummer. But yeah, these clouds look pretty though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The volumetric clouds sure do make this a lot prettier. Oh, I forgot to turn this on. That probably would have helped. <laughs> yeah, probably turning that on would have helped. Ooh, let's try and level it off. Let's try and level it off while we're coming in through the flames here. Okay. Okay, pulling some Gs. It's fine. It's not fine. It's not fine. It's not fine anymore. It's not fine anymore. I want to go home. 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 What blew up? I want to go home. Go ahead and bleed off the re-entry. Okay, I think the plane is gonna survive. I think we're fine. Okay. Ooh, that was a... That was a little toasty. <laughs> Fun! But yeah, no, literally what blew up? Uh, just the decals. Okay, I can live with that. As long as the plane and the, and the engine survive, I'm okay. Who cares about them decals? Ooh, diving through the clouds. Very ominous. 
Very ominous and spoopy. I can't see the ground. I don't like that I can't see the ground. Okay, there's the ground. Up oh, and there go the engines. <laughs> well, that's fun. Alrighty. But at least most of the plane's here. Oh. Yep, go ahead and quickly recover it before it decides to jump 15 feet into the air. There we go. Yeah, got, got a little bit of science. 2.2 credits. Alrighty. And yeah, we'll go ahead and get that thing rebuilding. Oh, do these both have 48 days left on them, which is very interesting. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do the, um, the constellation first, though. And there we go, 16 science. So our um, magnetosphere analysis did work. And now we can go ahead and get entry, descent, and landing. That'll take about 110 days to unlock. Beautiful. Alrighty, here we go. The launch of the navigational satellite. Our first, the first ever GPS launch. Alrighty, three, two, one. Uh-oh. Failure. Alrighty. Well, that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. You can't expect all launches to go up without a hitch. But yeah, that is a little unfortunate, though. Our our first NAVSAT launch is, um, a failure. Um, or, or maybe not. Let's see. Can we go ahead and stage the next stage? Okay, I doubt it. I was thinking maybe we could stage the next stage, but we are sort of falling into the atmosphere here. So we might be able to Pull it off. Let's see. Can no, I don't think. I don't think ascent guidance has really figured out what's going on. Either we're, we're just doing a retrograde burn. We're just trying to slow down our re-entry. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're just gonna have to accept this failure and and move on. Okay. And our lunar flyby expires in 55 days. So we're gonna go ahead and have to take the hit here. Couldn't quite get the, um, the heavy ready in time. Okay, and it is now 1965. I might go ahead and start training Dennis on the, um, the proficiency as well. Who knows, we might have him do a flight. Seeing as it's probably going to be a little while until we get our first crewed launch vehicle. Alrighty, there we go. 80, 85. 85. Perfect. So we did it. And we're getting, yeah, we're getting high altitude flight science. So all in all, very good. Just past 85. Yeah, there we go. I was worried because it wasn't, it wasn't selecting, but yeah, I forgot. In order to complete it, we actually have to land. It doesn't just complete when we do it because we got to make sure we get Victoria back safe. And look how happy she is. I mean, it's not quite the Carmen line. But, you know, this is still, like, I would call this space. <laughs> still very spacey to me. Yeah, at least we're not spinning out of control, which is the problem with us going, like, directly into space. Was we lost all lift over the wings. Um, so there we go. Pull some re-entry Gs. Oh, and there go the decals. Don't worry, we don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there goes the other decal. I wonder how NASA kept their stickers from ablating off during re-entry. I don't know. A very impressive sticker technology NASA has. Ooh, what's that over there? Are those little islands? Are those clouds or are those islands? That's probably Cuba. Probably see Cuba over there. We'll go ahead and land in the um in the sun-soaked part of the uh the sea. This looks pretty. As the sun's going down, a beautiful flight by not, not by our not pilot Victoria. Okay, I don't know when our safe speed to deflect our flaps to um deploy our flaps is. Probably not. 
like Mach 1, but that's yeah, fine. Oh, that stalls us. We deploy our flaps anymore and we stall. Okay, that's good to know. Shoots time. But there we go. At least at least everything survived. I think. Yeah, there we go. The engines are still there. Quickly recover. Our X-15 is a very bouncy breed of plane. Alright, I got a bit more science there. Not bad, not bad. And yeah, our um our lunar contract just expired. <laughs> In terms of funding, you have no funding. Okay, we'll just go ahead and reaccept that real quick. Give us our money back. I want my money back. Uh, but yeah, as for, our, as for our next thing, we can go, we can do even more X-Planes, high, difficult, high, 90 kilometers, 105 kilometers. Yeah, th those are all relatively within reach. But yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and accept. Yeah, let's do geostationary. That'll give us enough money to go ahead and at least start work on our launch pad, and then we'll go ahead and get this navigational satellite up. New 80-ton launch pad, 87. Okay, it's a little bit more than I thought it was. Uh, so yeah, we'll just wait until the, the, the navsat launch then. Because yeah, I can't really get any more money right now. Alrighty, and I think I'm going to go ahead and launch this. I'm going to go ahead and do this one manually. Because I think actually our previous failure was caused by ascent guidance. Because Apogee and Perigee were way too low. So yeah, we're, we're just going to do this. Um, Alrighty. Three. Two. One. Away goes a rocket! Oh wait, I forgot. I forgot, I have to, I have to, I have to do it all manually. <laughs> ah, I forgot! I have for gore. Alrighty, it's time to fire off the SRB stages. And all we really needed was one. There we go. There's there's our orbit. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's 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 the orbit they wanted. So we're done here. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I did slightly over engineer this a little bit because yeah, again I was using the wrong avionics core type. But yeah, good thing, good thing I caught it, I guess, before the official launch. But yeah, that, that did save a lot of weight, not using the, um, the controllable avionics when you don't need to. We can go ahead and extend the antenna, though. I don't know why that didn't auto-extend. Oh, right, because I wasn't using mech jab. Duh. That's why it didn't auto-extend, you silly goose. And only 24 more seconds to confirm that we have the first navigational satellite. There we go, navigational satellite. Perfect. I kind of want to spend the rest of these boosters and see how, how high we can get. Yeah, now that we got the contract complete, let's see. Let's see if we can get out, like, past the moon. <laughs> Go! Maybe we can get into, like, high space. That'll be good. That'll allow our... Then we can at least get some science, you know? Yeah! There we go. Okay. Well, I don't think that's quite deep space, but... Hmm, it's eccentric. It's out there. Look at our debris, though, on the different orbits. Low energy, medium energy, high energy. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, we're, we're not quite in deep enough space in order to do anything. So, whatever, you'll just hang out up here. Not sure how much help a navigational satellite all the way out here is, but I don't know. <laughs> it might help. <laughs> uh, there we go. Cool dealio. Alrighty, but there we go. Now that we have 121,000 funds, we can go ahead and actually build maybe a 120-ton pad. Let's see. No, let's see. So 150 ton pad's gonna cost 150,000 funds. If we go, let's just say we go for like a 100 ton pad. That's not bad, actually. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind having a little bit of wiggle room with our with our pad tonnage. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and see. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and see what contracts that we can do to try and get our funding up. Because yeah, we still need to get another 100,000 in order to unlock all the parts for our CSJ heavy. So yeah, let's just see what kind of contracts we got. 
Any new things? Oh, here we go. Reach orbital speed and return safely. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Recover a craft from an orbital velocity descent. Wait, hold on. That advance. That advance covers our CSJ heavy. Okay, we will definitely be able to do that. That seems honestly pretty easy. So yeah, let's go ahead and I'm go I am going to go ahead and upgrade the launch pad and go ahead and get our lunar mission going. That'll be the first thing next time. Or probably not, because actually, yeah, we need to wait for the launch pad to be built. So yeah, new launch pad. So there we go. Now we're building our new 100 ton launch pad. Yeah, there we go. Launch pad 3 is being built right there. So yeah, 172 days for launch pad 3. So yep, that all sounds pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tiny solar panel, the modular landing tank, the Agena vacuum engine, the RD-107-108 vernier, see the RD-0105-0109, and the caster boosters. There we go! The heavy is on the build list. Wonderful. But yeah, I guess before we go, I'll go ahead and show you guys the, yeah, as you can see, 76 tons um, launch vehicle. And yeah, it's pretty much just like the regular CSG. We got the boosters to help with the first stage thrust weight ratio. Without them, it's like abysmal. <laughs> so the boosters help. And then, yeah, instead of the, um, the AJ-10 upper stage, we have a RD-0105. Which is a really good engine. This thing has a burn time of 7 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, so yeah, it is a really, really good engine. It is a, um, it is a Carolox engine. Uses kerosene and liquid oxygen. Um, but yeah, it's really good. The only downside is it has low thrust. So I have these two verniers to help supplement it right when it starts. But, um, these, these sh shut down before this shuts down. And then up here, the Agena, a vacuum engine. Better than the AJ-10, uh, way more efficient than the AJ-10 with our lunar transfer stage and then our little tiny lunar impactor probe on top there. So yep, that's that's the rocket. <laughs> Everything else is pretty much the same though, same, same mid-stage engine right there. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for new videos, have a great day, get rest of your day, and yeah, next time... We will be launching our lunar impactor and also um, returning from Earth orbit. Although the lunar impactor, in my opinion, is way more exciting than a than a return from orbit. <laughs> like, like, like it's not that hard, right? Like I say this, but we have heat shields. Although those be expensive, though. My goodness. Maybe we shouldn't have spent all the money unlocking this rocket. Maybe we needed it to buy the heat shields. Anyways, I'm sure it's fine. Anyways, goodbye for now.